It's fake? What do you mean it's fake? It's fake? What does fake even mean? Welcome back to Gemology for Schmucks, everybody. Today we're gonna to talk about the word fake. Fake can mean many things for a gemologist and anybody involved in the gem world. So what can it mean? The most obvious is what everybody calls fake, and that's something that pretends to be something that it's not. So that's what we call a simulant. So for example, if you're talking about a diamond, if you've got cubic zirconia, cubic zirconia and diamond have nothing to do with each other. They can look similar, and that's why we call it a simulant. So simulant is number one. That's the most blatant of fakes. It has no connection whatsoever with the stone it impersonates. The next thing down the line is what we call a synthetic. Now synthetic stones are called several different things in the industry, depending on which company it is. Lab created, lab grown, man created, and my personal favorite, cultured gemstones. There's so many layers in that. Okay, cultured originally was used with pearls, right? Pearls that are formed with human assistance are called cultured pearls. Think about the other layer. When you say this is a cultured diamond instead of a synthetic diamond, it doesn't sound like a chemical process. It sounds like the better choice, the more ethical choice, which is rubbish. And we'll get into some of the reasons why that's rubbish in a completely different video. Cultured. These are all things that are not natural stones. They are synthetic. However, they have all the same properties as the natural stone. So when you test them using gemological tools, you will see the same properties in a synthetic stone that you will in a natural stone. So that's why you will always need people like us gemologists to separate them for you. So if you think back to some of these other videos where I've been talking about the splitting of light, a synthetic stone is going to split light just as much as a natural stone is. The surface reflection, the surface reflection is gonna be yi mo yi yang, completely the same as a natural stone. So synthetic stones are obviously going to be the best choice if you're trying to impersonate a natural stone. They're also some of the most tricky to distinguish from natural stones because they are so similar. Depends on the stone that we're talking about, but overall, we're talking about something that is effectively a sapphire. Is it okay to call a synthetic or a lab-grown sapphire a sapphire? No, it's not. You have to call it a synthetic or a lab-grown or lab-created or man-created sapphire. So synthetic is just a man-created or lab-grown version of the natural stone. What else? Another thing that can be called a fake is a natural gemstone that has been treated or enhanced. So a treated or enhanced gem is one where you take the natural stone that maybe doesn't look so awesome. And what you do is you add certain processes to it. These are chemical processes or something like heat treatment that can change the stone and make it better. Now there's a lot of great treatments out there. Treatments that take stones that would have been ugly and unusable and turning them into something that you may not be able to tell the difference with a natural stone without using a microscope and advanced testing. That's another reason you'll need us forever, ha! There are certain treated stones that can look the same as natural stones, but with a much, much lower price point. Why is that? Because one of the main factors of a gemstone's price is its rarity. So if there's something that would have been ugly and it can be treated to look like this, then of course the price is not going to be the same as the one that looks that way naturally without being touched. And we can trace that. Those of us that are gemologists that have experience looking at these stones can look at the stone with a microscope and oftentimes tell if it's been treated. There are some treatments that we cannot. We have to send it to an advanced lab. And those people have machines that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they have a lot of research and they have all of these different things and they have super, they have a lot of things to help them out. So treatments are a lot like adding yeast to something. It changes the inherent qualities of what that thing is. So if you're talking about bread, if you don't have yeast, you just have crackers. But when you add yeast, then lo and behold, now you have sourdough bread. Now sometimes it's just like making wine, right? What is wine? Wine is Grapes, it's grape juice. But when you add yeast, yeast will take what's in the grape juice and turn it into something fantastic. Now, wine is not like adding a flavoring. You're not adding Kool-Aid. What the yeast does is it unlocks the potential that's inside of that grape juice. Treatments are the same. If you heat treat certain gemstones, not all, those gemstones might change into an incredible blue, for example. So learning to identify what stones have that potential is a huge part of what these gemologists are doing. So there are many wonderful things that can come about because of treatment. There are some that are normal, that are commonly accepted in the trade. And learning to talk about and ask the right questions about treatments is really what I'd like to start talking about in this video. It's a whole huge topic of study, but learning to ask the right questions is what's important. An important note with treatment, any reputable gem dealer is going to tell you their treatment if you ask the right question. So if you ask them, is this a natural untreated stone? They will say yes or no. If they lie to you, that's on them and you can chase them for it. The other thing you need to keep in mind is with high-end gemstones, 
Oftentimes they're being sold alongside a reputable certificate from a lab with a lot of experience. And those certificates will tell you what you need to know. But learning how to read those certificates is what we do. And that's also one of my major goals with this channel is to help you to have a general awareness of what's out there. What questions do you need to be asking? And then when somebody says it's a natural gemstone, that's supposed to mean untreated. Always clarify though. If they say it's natural, you ask them, does that mean untreated? And if they skirt around saying yes or no, that's somebody you should probably turn around and walk away from. Gemologists and most gem dealers are people that rely on their reputation to survive. So if they're not comfortable saying yes or no to a direct question like this, you don't wanna be dealing with them. So let me tell you a little bit about this ring and why I was looking at it at the beginning of the video. So this one I call my ring of knowledge. And I bought it when I was in Taiwan on vacation before I started my gemological training. Now I was walking around and I saw this stone shop. There's a lot of stone shops in Taiwan. And I saw that it had a strong star on it. If the stone is called a star sapphire and it has a strong star, then chances are that it's going to be more expensive. As we talked about in the color episode, check it out right here. If the color is also strong and pure, then you would expect the price to be expensive. So when I come up and I ask the lady, how much is this? And the whole ring is something like $20, $30. I'm like, oh, okay, there's a trap. At that time, I didn't know how to ask questions and I wasn't gonna bother with asking questions and trying to find out what the trap is on a ring that costs $20. So the logic is pretty simple. Buy the ring and then after my gemological training, I'll have an idea of what the trick is. And I did find out. What I did was I took that ring and I pulled the stone out of the ring setting. And when I went to Lucy Walker Jewelry Academy in Kuala Lumpur, check her out over here, I learned how to make jewelry with my own two hands. And what I did was I took the stone that I'd now learned is a synthetic, and I learned why it's a synthetic and how to prove that it's a synthetic by looking at this stone. And I decided to make a ring, this ring that you see on my hand right now, from that stone using the skills that I learned in her class. Who knew? In one month, you can go from learning nothing to being able to make a full ring. Now it's, you know, it's not perfect, but I love the ring and it's got an entire story behind it of going from complete ignorance into knowledge. And so that's something I like to take with me in each day. You can come from zero to knowing a whole lot in a relatively short amount of time as long as you really apply yourself. So how do I know that this is synthetic? Well, after my course, I found that one of the most common varieties of synthetic sapphires is something called a flame fusion or vinoy. So what happens is that the same material that sapphire crystals are naturally made out of in the earth, they take those in a laboratory condition and put it through a blowtorch. And so as those powders go through the blowtorch, they melt and then they recrystallize and it's rotating. And so it basically makes it's like a cylindrical candle which I know a lot of candles are cylindrical, but moving on. And one of the things that happens that never happens in a natural stone, in Vernoy sapphires, you find something called curved growth, because remember it. And so what you see when you're able to observe the stone at the right angles and in the right lighting conditions is a curved band. And so when you look on the backside of this ring, I have what I like to call a truth window. So the backside of this ring setting, you can still see the stone and you can clearly see the curved bands of a synthetic stone. Now this is as obvious as it can possibly get with synthetic stones. Most stones are not this obvious, but because it's so obvious that it's a synthetic stone, that's why I decided that this is my, this is my ring of knowledge. It's a point of conversation that I can have with anybody now. So as a quick recap, today we're talking about the word fake. What does fake mean to gemologists? There's simulants, which impersonate another stone, but have nothing to do with that stone. There are synthetic stones, which have all the same properties as the natural stone, but are made in laboratory conditions. And then there are treated stones, which are natural stones that have had certain processes applied to them to make them look better. And a natural or untreated stone is one that has not been touched in any way aside from normal cutting and polishing. So remember to ask questions when you're buying stones. If they're not comfortable giving you a yes or no to a direct question, then that's somebody you don't need to be dealing with. Most gemologists are very much so concerned about their reputation. We survive based on that. So don't be afraid to ask questions and that'll go a long way to keeping you out of danger. And that's all I've got for today. Thank you for joining me on Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, my name is Peter Nelson and I appreciate you taking this time. See you next time. <laughs>